The electrochemical cells that we have discussed so far have different reactions proceeding in an anode and a cathode. And this difference in reactions creates something called an electric potential, also known as a cell voltage. And we saw that under standard conditions of one bar pressure and one molar concentration, we can find our cell voltage by using this formula where we first find our cell voltage of the anode and then subtract that from the cathode. And these values can be looked up at a, on a reduction half reaction table. Now, what happens when our conditions are not standard? Well, then we have to use this formula. And we saw that this formula is called Nurse formula. And what it basically tells us is that the concentration of our solutions in beaker 1 and beaker 2 will make a difference. They will influence the final cell voltage of our cell. So as of now, we've only really spoken about these types of electrochemical cells in which beaker 1 contains the oxidation reaction of some metal X and beaker 2, the half cell 2, contains the reduction reaction in which some other metal, metal Y, is reduced. So, let's see what the overall net redux reaction is. Well, our X metal releases an electron and also releases an X plus ion into our solution, increasing the concentration of the X plus ion in beaker 1. This electron then travels via the conductor into this second electrode, a different metal. Now inside this electrode, this electron reacts with this Y plus ion that is taken up into the electrode and they react to form our Y solid. Now notice one type of reaction occurred that deals with X in this beaker and a second type of reaction, a different reaction occurred in beaker 2. And this difference created something called a cell voltage. And we saw that once again under standard conditions we use this formula and under non-standard condition we use this formula. Now I want to talk about a different type of electrochemical cell called the concentration cell. Now in this cell, we also have two half cells or two beakers. We also have a salt bridge and a conductor with a voltmeter. The only difference is that now we have the same exact electrode. So this electrode might be composed of some metal X and this electrode is also composed of that same metal. So now we have the same type of reaction occurring in beaker 1 in be and beaker 2. The only difference is we have different concentrations of solutions because we learned from this equation that even though this guy might be zero the concentration difference will still create an electric potential or cell voltage now what is this guy for this type of electrochemical cell called the concentration cell well let's see well our E of the cell or cell voltage of our cell is equal to Notice this guy is now zero because if we try to find our E on the standard conditions what we will get is that this guy and this guy are actually the same. The value on our table is the same so we subtract some number X minus X gives us zero. So this guy goes to zero and what we are left with is this equation where now our cell voltage will depend strictly on the concentrations of our solutions. So let's look at an example of this reaction. In order to really understand what a concentration cell is, let's create one. Suppose we have the following electrochemical setup. We have two half cells. In half cell number one, oxidation of solid copper takes place. So this electrode is solid copper. And our initial concentration of aqueous copper in beaker 1 is 0.05 molar. Now in half cell number 2, reduction of copper takes place. And this copper or aqueous copper becomes copper solid. Now this electrode is also copper solid. But our concentration in beaker 1 is 0.5 molar. So this guy is more concentrated and this guy is more dilute. So let's see what the net redux reaction for this electrochemical cell is. So we add the oxidation reaction and the reduction reaction up and we get our net reaction to be the following. 
Notice that this copper solid and this copper solid cancel because they appear on both sides of the equation. Also, the electrons cancel because they appear on both sides of the equation. What we are left with is this guy and this guy. Now, this guy actually comes from half cell number two, right? Because when we add these guys up, this guy from half cell number two will appear on the left side of our net equation, while this aqueous copper will appear on the right side of our equation. So we go from a higher concentration from 0.5 to a lower concentration, 0.05, and that makes sense. So if we were to write uh, the equilibrium constant expression, it would be this concentration divided by this concentration. And we'll see why that's important in a second. First, let's review exactly what happens in this setup. Well, this is the more dilute solution. Initially, we have very little aqueous uh, C2, Cu2 plus ions dissolved in our solution. But as the reaction continues, this metal bar releases more of the copper ions into solution, increasing the solution, making it more concentrated. Likewise, this aqueous copper is taken up by the metal bar because when electrons travel from this electrode to this electrode, they react to form copper solid. So this becomes more dilute or less concentrated. Eventually, when the two concentrations equal, our reaction will stop because our cell voltage will be zero. So let's calculate our cell voltage and our initial condition of this concentration and this concentration. So our formula is this one. But notice that this guy is zero because if we were to look up the values for this oxidation reaction and this reduction reaction, we see that the magnitude is the same, but signs are different. So we, if we add these guys up, we will get zero. That's why this guy is zero. So our E is simply this whole guy here. Notice this is for 25 degrees Celsius. Now, why do we say log 0 0.05 over 0 0.5? Well, remember, Q is like the equilibrium constant, except it's not at equilibrium. It's also the concentration of products over reactants. And in our net redux reaction, the product is this guy in half cell number one that has a concentration of 0 0.05. And this is half cell number two, the reactant, which is found in this half cell number two. So our concentration is 0 0.5. And that's why we divide 0.05 by 0.5. Now our n number of moles of electrons is two moles, right? Two moles appear on this side and two moles appear on this side. So our n is two. So we take our calculator, we plug it in, we get a negative number. But since we have a negative on the outside, that means our E or cell voltage of our cell is positive. So we see that even though the same exact reaction takes place here as it does here, a concentration or a different concentration in here and here results in a cell voltage. Now, of course, when the concentrations equal out, this will go to zero because log of one is zero.